we just watched episode eight of the strain called The Intruders. Woohoo! And, and we have all of our friends today. That's Tracking, F, the master, who is my personal favorite, and Vaughn, aka Folksy, who I guess is going to be our stand in for Quinlan right now. Because <laughs> we, yeah. You know. But look how cute these guys are. Like, the master is huge. Like, Look how big he is compared to everybody else. And I just love how Citrakin this guy looks. Like, there is no doubt. Yeah. And F's pretty good, too. And I had this guy with me at work today, and I, I noticed for the first time that he has, like, if you look at his, like, throat, you can see, like, the weird stinger, like, float throat, blah, blah, throat flap things. Like, how it's, like, pink and, like, weird and, like, swirly. Like, so detailed. So detailed. Anyways, so back to the actual episode. Stuff went down. It did. Basically, Zach and F are walking around and they run into somebody who's in distress. And they run this big old warehouse of stuff that people need who are probably trying to fly under the radar, so they sell guns, and they have surgical kits for, like, thugs who can't go to the hospital, and all this kind of stuff like that. So they end up helping this guy out who ends, who was shot, and F picks up a rifle. I'm surprised you didn't open with the episode opening, though. I know. Let's just save that for last. The episode opening was, like, the best part of the episode. And Gus, we have... It feels like we haven't seen Gus in a really long time, and that's just because we took such a huge hiatus from the show. I don't even think so. I think he's been around just a little bit, like, first three episodes, and then again. And but Gus later. and the Silver Angel are doing, like, a supply pickup, and they realize that the place that they're picking up the supplies from has been ransacked, and they're just like, Aah. It's time to leave, guys. Let's go. They go back to the restaurant and they convince the family who owns the restaurant and also the girl who Gus is kind of in love with that it's it's time to go. The city is, is gone. And so she thanks Gus for helping them convince their father to leave. And then they have a, like a, a little kiss session in the back. And, then you just see and this, it's really cute. And then you just see this figure looming behind them. And who is it? But it is Quinlan. He's just like... Hey, um, so, uh, you know, I trained Vaughn, and Vaughn trained you, so therefore, you're my bitch. <laughs> but he says it really nicely. Yeah, he's all, like, super eloquent, and, like, talking about, like, you know, oh, you know, your girlfriend's very beautiful, but, you know, the master, I can see his shadow on you, and you, like, got away with the whole bunch of stuff, and he's not gonna forgive you. And, like, um, I've experienced love. <laughs> and I've lost love. And I know that the only way that you can be happy is if you defeat the master and leave her behind until that point. And you're like, he gets it. He's dropping truth bombs. He like, is. And that's just on a show where no one ever listens. It's really nice to have a character who's just like, okay, guys, this is how it is. This is what's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, there is to track him, but people but, seem to, like, not listen to him as they should. I know, it's, like, to track him, it's just like, oh, the old man is speaking, let's let's ignore him, even though he's like, Silver harms them! <laughs> UV light! Silver! <laughs> I guess the problem with to track him is he doesn't show enough heart. Yeah. Like, he's so focused on what he what he wants that he's willing to just, like, let everyone fall to the wayside if they're not on with his goals and I mean they're good goals but everybody else is more willing to also I guess he's kind of trapped by the fact that he he is saying it as it is when other characters are kind of framing it in the disease thing and so the moment you start telling someone that it's like vampires and calling them stragoi you just lose everyone but I mean there are occasions in episodes that are to come where you know they're like oh no, these people are in trouble. They need our help. And he's like, nope, we got things to do. I'm going this way. You guys just do whatever the hell you want. This is the important thing we should be focusing on. But the whole world could be damned as far as his goals are concerned. So I think that's kind of where 
someone like Quinlan who's like, no, no, we need to work to protect what we love, whereas Track is more like, nope, this guy needs to burn. It's kind of that interesting question of what makes you human and what makes you monstrous. Yay! Yay. Themes! Themes! Ooh, getting themes. deep. Okay, can we can we talk about it now? Because we need to talk about it before we can talk about like the ending of the episode. Okay, so the episode opens and it's like Icorse and he's so excited because he has a bunch of wigs on a table and he's like, I think I found your hair color and I shit you not, it's makeup session with Kelly. And he's teaching her how to use makeup to make her look human. And he's like, oh, you know, eventually you'll gain control over your hands again and you'll be able to do this yourself. And he's so happy because finally someone <laughs> understands. And like, it's just the cutest thing ever. He's just like, is this your color? And oh, look, your nose is starting to get soft, but you'll have it for a while. And soon speech will come and it'll just be natural to you. And eyes, you have to put in these contacts because eyes are the windows to your soul. And you're just like, oh my God. <laughs> I, I, still, I still stand by what I said, that this actor is still having the time of his life. Oh, still like, having he's it. Just, he's just like, <laughs> yes. These are the lines you want me to say? Are you kidding? This is the best job ever. Okay, so throughout this entire episode with Zach and F, we're doing the, the windmill repeating of, thanks, mom. Whatever. So everybody... I, seriously, I want to know how many dogs they said went to the farm when this kid was a kid because he has no concept of finality. None, none, none. So F and Nora are upstairs, and F is finally starting to tell Nora some stuff of what happened in Washington. And Zach is in the bay, like downstairs and he's playing his video game. And it's so creepy because as F and Nora are talking, Kelly's in the window. Like she's like hanging to the window and like looking in and you can hear like the, like you know the. And it's just the sense like, cause he's just sitting there doing his own thing and you can just, you don't even see her. You just see this presence, yeah. like this blur, just watching him. And you just get chills going up your back. And eventually she climbs down and she knocks on the window. Zach! Oh my god. And the kid, okay, the kid opens the door. Like, like the like, F's like, don't, don't do, do it. it. Kelly, stay out there. And Zach, don't open the door. And he's like, no, I want mom. And he rips the thing off the door. And she comes in and F tackles Zach. Zach. And then the creepy vampire children come in, and then it's just like this really kind of well done fight scene. Oh, it was amazing. Oh, the tension was high, and you're just like, oh my god, Nora is gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good because at one point, like, Nora is up there and she's got a gun, right? And she's walking down the stairs, and you're like, oh my god, there's no back to these stairs. Somebody could totally, and then the stinger goes through the <laughs> stairs, and you're like, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. Everybody lives. Zach kind of learns his, like, if, if he says one more time after this episode, Can we fix mom? I will just, like, I will flip a table. Because... No! No! Look at that thing. It's masquerading as human, but it's not. You saw the stinger. And she went after Nora, who Zach likes, right? Yeah. So, obviously she can't be trusted. Yeah, she went after Nora and Dad. Not a good thing. A good thing. But she, so she's run off in the end. The, the blind children are dismantled. So I had fun this episode. I had lots of fun. There was, it was really good. It was tense, but you felt like things were moving and you did not want to shoot F in the face. I know. That's weird. And I don't like that because a lot of my identity with the show is that like, I want to, I don't like F. I don't know. I think the kid is going up the list and he's almost replacing F for me. Ugh. Oh. It, yeah, it was it was fun. I mean, yes, they were still doing a lot of the kid repetition stuff, but <sighs> at least he's maybe gonna learn his lesson. 